friends, this is Angelus de Mortio with another multiplayer build guide for Mass Effect Andromeda. One of my favorite specializations from Dragon Age Inquisition was the Champion. Not only did it have some of the best defense in the game, but it was also one of the most adept at area denial and zoning enemies. It should then come as no surprise that when I found a class in Andromeda multiplayer that could be built with a similar core function, it quickly became one of my favorites. This Asari Sentinel is both the first line of defense and the backbone of the team, constantly keeping enemies on their heels. As a small anecdote, I originally had intended a much different build for the Sentinel, but the 1.06 patch completely mucked that all up. Trust me, that's not a bad thing at all. Let's begin. The first ability, Backlash, is a new biotic power that allows the champion to summon a Hoplon-esque biotic Aegis that absorbs and reflects damage. Now before we get into the evolutions, let's first understand how Backlash works. It's not a perfect shield. It reflects back most projectiles that hit it, but some are just absorbed or get through at reduced damage. For example, Hydra missiles are only absorbed and on gold will likely break the Aegis and still damage the Sentinel. Destroyer cannon shots are only absorbed and on gold the Aegis can only take one of two shots. Ascendant orbs can be entirely reflected by an undamaged backlash. I've also noticed some shots that are normally reflected going through backlash, such as a nullifier blast. This is most likely due to the amount of health the Aegis has left, but I have not confirmed it. At rank 4 we take durability to increase the health of the Aegis by an additional 200 points. Even ignoring the supposition that Backlash reflects shots based upon the remaining health of the Aegis, this can still be an immense help. At rank 5 we take reflection to increase the damage reflected to 500%. This upgrade is essential to the functionality of Backlash, making it an easy choice. Despite this having a more diminished role later, I still upgrade this first due to its immense utility early on. The second ability Throw, the basic biotic power. At rank 4 we take the damage and force upgrade to increase the force of throw up to 1275 newtons and the collision damage to 432. At rank 5 we take the duration upgrade to lift targets for a brief few seconds which primes them for biotic combos. This makes throw one of a select few abilities that can be both a primer and a detonator. At rank 6 we take Swift Detonation which increases the damage of power combos by 30% and reduces the cooldown of throw to 5 seconds. I upgrade throw 3rd. Now the astute of you might notice the base cooldown of throw is 8 seconds and Swift Detonation says it reduces the cooldown by 50%. So throw should have a 4 second cooldown right? Except that's not exactly what it does. Notice it says plus 50% recharge speed. It's worded that way because recharge speed is, best I can tell, a bonus divisor. To keep the boring math brief, we are used to multipliers, which in this case would be phrased with the formula final cooldown equals the base cooldown multiplied by the difference of 1 minus the recharge speed bonus. But as a divisor, this would fit a different formula. Final cooldown equals the base cooldown divided by the sum of 1 plus the recharge speed bonus. This formula is very inconsistent with the usual damage calculations, but it does mirror the damage resistance formula. Maybe I missed something. But this formula also fits other abilities with the recharge speed bonus, such as... The third ability, Energy Drain. This is now our third encounter with this ability in five build guides. As such, things might seem a bit familiar here, but it's just too powerful to ignore in this build. At rank 4, we take recharge speed to reduce the cooldown time of Energy Drain to 9 seconds. Again, we see my math on recharge speed divisor make more sense than the typical bonus multiplier. 
At rank 5, we take Extended Drain to recharge 6 shields per second for 4 seconds. This also causes Energy Drain to prime enemies for tech combos. Like Throw, this is one of very few abilities that can be both Primer and Detonator. The symmetry here between Throw and Energy Drain should be pretty familiar to those that watch my Human Sentinel, but despite that, the difference in strategy will quickly become apparent. I upgrade Energy Drain second. The first passive tree, Offensive Biotics, helps us fine tune the primary focus of this build that we will illuminate in the strategy section. At rank 4, we take Power Efficiency to add 0.25 to the Recharge Speed Divisor for all powers. As we've discussed, this isn't quite as powerful as a 25% reduction to power cooldowns, but every little bit helps. At rank 5, we take Combo Detonations to give us an additional 50% to combo damage and 30% combo radius. As this is kind of icing on the cake, I upgrade this last. The second passive tree, Tech Armor, adds to our general survivability and sustainability in the field. At rank 4 and 5, we take the Durability upgrades to give us an additional plus 40 to our passive damage resistance. With this setup, Tech Armor is passively reducing all incoming damage by nearly 40%. I upgrade Tech Armor 4th. The loadout maximizes as much damage output as we can muster without sacrificing cooldown time. I bring the recently buffed M25 Hornet to play with barrel and magazine upgrades. After the 1.06 patch, the Hornet feels absolutely fantastic and really earns its spot here. For equipment, we can go a ton of directions. But I take the Juggernaut shield for a little more defense as well as rounding out our offensive options with a massive melee damage bonus. For boosters, I use Power Efficiency mod to reduce cooldown times even more and Cryo Ammo to not only slow enemies down, but also add a third power combo option to our portfolio. As usual, see Oliver's display to the right for some alternatives. Now, many of you will remember my Asari Blood Mage. Even with some recent nerfs to Annihilation, that build now hits like a freight train. This build hits even harder. Now, how do we take that and make the most out of it? Two words, Area Denial. The concept of Area Denial is simple, but can also be a bit complicated depending on how much experience you have. The first step in Area Denial is knowing the map layout. Once you learn it, then most of the work is done. Knowing the map, you know there are several lanes that enemies will use to approach you and your team from where the enemies spawn. This changes based upon where you and your team are standing. Keep an eye on your compass and note where the enemies are spawning in force. From there, position yourself at the end of a lane. As enemies approach, use energy drain, then throw to lay down a tech combo. Tech combos leave an electric field on the ground that can stun other enemies. From there, alternate applicable power combos and weapons fire until the enemies are dead. As new enemies spawn, move to the next lane as needed and repeat. It sounds rather simple, but in practice it takes a strong level of map knowledge and awareness. Even having been practicing for a while, I'm still not completely fluent at this role. Backlash also has amazing utility of getting you out of messes or countering nullifiers, but be mindful of how much damage it takes. If a shot from the enemy would do more damage than the Aegis has health, the shot will bypass it from what I can tell. It's very easy to get tunnel vision and overextend, quickly becoming surrounded with this role. Just keep a cool head and fall back frequently. Also, try not to laugh too maniacally with all the combos going off around you. It makes your teammates nervous for some reason. Never allowing enemies to gain even so much as a foothold on the battlefield. The Asari champion is the paragon of the maxim, the best defense is a strong offense. Have a different way to build the Asari Sentinel? Let me know in the comments below. If you are new to this channel, hello! I make build guides, strategies, and tutorials as well as live stream frequently. 
If you liked what you saw here and would like to be notified of the next build guide, click that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. I also run a multi-genre gaming community called the Pixel Crashers as well as co-lead the Apex Spec Ops community. You can find links for all of these things in the description down below. Until next time, this is Angelus de Mortio, signing off.